There's been quite a lot of advances in effects as well in Premiere, although strangely, nothing at all happening to the list of video transitions. In fact, in many ways, they've taken some stuff out. You've still got the same rubbishy page peel in Premiere that we had when I first started in 1994. Actually, most of the time I use a Dissolve anyway, so it's not really an issue. And if I do want some fancy transitions, I'll end up buying them, like I've got a bunch of Boris Continuum effects here. One of the biggest things they added was a thing called the Lumetri Color Panel. So I'm just going to grab a quick clip and put it down onto the timeline. This happens to be a 4K clip, which I'm just making fit an HD timeline. And I want to do a bit of color correction to it. Now I do have all the effects that I had previously. So for example, I've got the fast color corrector, the three-way color corrector, the RGB curves, and they all do exactly the same as they did before. And I can still do quite a lot of things with them. But they've added in this Lumetri color panel. Lumetri is basically the way that SpeedGrade, which is Adobe's grading program, does color. So what they've basically done is taken a large chunk of SpeedGrade and put it directly into Premiere. Now the simplest way to get to it is you just go up to these list of different workspaces that we've got here. These are the equivalent of the things that you could get up by going to Window and then Workspaces and then choosing one of these. It's just there nicely placed along the top. You can see I've got one there, which is a preset which I've set up. But I'm going to go to this one, Color. It brings up these new fancy scopes. So if you're used to using scopes for, to help out with your grading, you've got some nice fancy ones that pop up here. You've got obviously a window here showing you the clip. And then this is where you do all your color correction. And this is divided up into various sections. So you've got basic correction, which is obviously where you do the, the main stuff. Creative is where you can do things like add some kind of look to it or you can add some of these sort of faded film effects. Curves is basically RGB curves and sort of secondary color correction where you can choose to do just reds or greens or whatever here. Color wheels just let you use wheels to control the different areas of the image. And then vignette is just allowing you to put a vignette around the edge. They often say that if you have a slightly darkened borders, then that pulls people's eyes more to the inside of the shot. I'm going to start off with the basic correction. Ignore that at the moment. I'll come back to that in a second. I'm just going to look at this lot. And here you can see, obviously, you've got a control over your color temperature. So you can warm it up or cool it down. You can add a tint to it. Just going to stick back, back to zero. And then you can do the obvious things of upping the exposure, changing the contrast. I particularly like these four controls here because the highlights is changing the, the brightness in the, the really bright areas. The shadows are uh, the not complete blacks, not the completely dark areas, but sort of the areas just above the blacks. And you can either make them a bit darker or you can bring them up quite a bit. I find that one's very, very useful if I've got quite a dark shot because I can bring up the shadows, which normally if you do that with another filter, everything ends up washed out. But then I can use one of these two, the blacks control, to make the blacks blacker again. So this helps to bring up the midtones whilst that gives it a decent black. You've got the same with the whites. This will actually either bring up the whites or darken down the whites. So that's the really, really white parts. These are the quite bright parts just before the white. So in this case, if I bring that down, I'm suddenly getting a bit more in the river. Contrast is pretty straightforward. It's just contrast. And of course, you can just reset the whole thing. You can try auto. I've tried that on various shots. I mean, this shot isn't too bad in the first place, but I find the auto sometimes works, sometimes it doesn't. Most of the time I find I just come up here and fiddle. And particularly with this one, it was a very bright day and the beach and the sea was a bit over the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down the highlights a little bit there and maybe put in a bit of color and maybe bring down the blacks a bit and fiddle with the shadows. And now I think I've got a nicer looking image. I can turn it off and turn it on just to get a look at what the differences are. So there, I've sorted out my basic correction. Let's go and be a bit creative. So in here, at the top, you've got access to a bunch of looks that they've created. So I could choose one of those, like Cine Space. No idea what Cine Space is, but let's throw it on there. I can cycle through the different looks using this panel. You can see you've got different types of looks, but I'll, I'll stick with Cine Space, I think. And obviously you can see the difference that's made. It's made it a bit bleached out and washed out. Maybe I want to tone it down a bit so I can just take the slider and that will reduce the amount of my Cine Space that's added. So there's now none. 
or it'll add even more of it to make it more over the top. So it's a bit like having a kind of movie look that you can throw onto something and then choose how much it's actually affecting it. I'm going to put that back to none for the moment. You also notice there's a browse there, so if you've got some look that somebody's created, then you can add it in here. Or you can do things like just add a faded film effect. You know, the way that film gets over time, it fades and fades and fades, and you can give it a bit more of a film effect maybe with that one. Uh, that's not my favourite thing here. My favourite thing here is generally the vibrance. Because saturation will just add in more colour, but vibrance adds in more colour, but not in the same way. So you know, if I take that all the way up, you can see I have a very, very yellowy beach. If I take this all the way up, it's a lot more yellow. I find that generally vibrance actually tends to add in more colour, but it still looks more realistic than adding in more saturation, so I like that one. I also like to fiddle with the sharpness a bit. Let's see what it looks like, set the thing playing. Yeah, I quite like it. Obviously I've got to the end and it's stopped, so I'm going to click on the loop play. That button isn't normally there by default, you have to click on the plus go off and find it and then drag it onto the timeline but I always do that because I like to loop play things when I'm doing effects and then I can start it playing and then as it's playing I can fiddle with this and see what the results are like. This effect in particular is being done by your graphics card so if you've got a very nice graphics card you can do more of it. I also find it needs more graphics card resources than a regular three-way color corrector so I can't pile too many of them on. If I have two or three clips on the timeline with the two or three Lumetri effects, sometimes it starts to drop a few frames. Because in many ways it's a better effect and a more complicated effect than you can get using the three-way colour corrector, so it takes a bit more effort. Having done that, I could move on to the curves. You can see you've got an RGB curves where you can pull it and put S curves and change the look of it, so on like that, sort of usual stuff. Let's just delete all those. And then you've got this saturation setting down here. This is showing you obviously all your various hues and the current saturation is this line in the middle. Now up here I can add in saturation just by using a slider and it adds more or less but here I can put points in in specific places. So let me put a point in there and I'm going to put a couple of points around it and then I'm going to drag the middle one out. And what I'm doing now is I'm adding in more saturation in just the blues. Because I stuck these two here that bit stays the same. This bit has made the blues bluer. Maybe I need to stretch that out a bit. And you see there what I've managed to do is, it's not particularly brilliant, but I've managed to put more blues in the blue. And you can use this to take the blues out as well. Let's get rid of all the blues completely by taking down the saturation on just the blues. I've now got grey water, but everything else has stayed intact. So this is a very nice way of just pulling out certain colours. Turn that one off for the moment. Then you've got your colour wheels where you can change the colour balance of the shadows, the colour balance of the mid-tones, colour balance of the highlights. I'm just picking these things up and moving them around. They don't jump around. You have to pull them quite a long way just to move them out. But the idea about that is that you can do much finer adjustments. These little sliders here change the brightness of the highlights or the shadows, or the mid-tones. Again, I tend to do most of that at the top, but this does allow you to get at the individual ones. And as I say, the vignette basically allows you to add on darkened edge. You can choose how big or how small it is, how round it is. I mean, they're all fairly straightforward. The idea being that that helps to pull your eye towards the center. Now, all the time I've been ignoring the scopes over here, and if I was doing this properly, I'd actually be looking at the scopes and worrying about where the blacks are and worrying about where the reds are. You've got lots of different types of scopes. So if I click on the settings here, you can see you can get up a vector scope and you can get up a YUV vector scope and a histogram. I like histograms myself. It's nice that we've actually got one in Premiere now. Let me turn off my other vector scopes. And an RGB parade. Again, which is something else I find useful for a bit of color correction. And you'll notice they're all working whilst the thing is moving, which the old scopes didn't do. Final thing to mention about the Lumetri effect is, okay, I've got various things over here and I've put the curves on. I can turn individual bits off. I quite like to reset the curves that I've done here because I've made a mess of it. How do you do that? I mean, I could turn it off, but then I can't use that bit at all. Well, the Lumetri effect here is also an effect in the effects control window. And if I open up that, you can see that I've got controls for all of the same things, which I can use here. And of course I can keyframe them, 
just like I could keyframe anything else. But I've also got a reset button. Click, that's reset that. Click, that's reset that. You could just use this control panel instead of that one.